All right, guys, you're watching it here first. Raptor R is getting a new intake. I went with SMB because I had one of these on my single cab. Obviously, it's not the same exact spec of the filter, and I think this filter is, like, extremely, extremely massive. But the box just came in. We're going to get the Raptor R pulled into the garage, get it started up, and, uh, yeah, and get this thing going and install it. I saw it online. looks pretty good. I don't think too many people even have them right now. They literally, no joke, just came out. But I like SMB. Had on my old F-150 single cap, and I also had it on my old EcoBoost F-150. So this is a very good brand. I'll link it down in the description below. This isn't sponsored, but I always just like the company. SMB, they always did a good job. So hopefully, maybe they'll hook me up and send me one for my EcoBoost truck. But let's get the Raptor R started. Baby looking clean over there. And she looking clean, too. Cold start. Good old exhaust flap is rattling. Raptors look at me. Went with some new fuel wheels. And uh, a lot of you guys might call this a little crazy. Well, we noticed this with my truck. So we changed the wheels. We went with a one inch wider, or it's a half an inch or one inch. I can't remember exactly to the exact spec what it was. But when we changed the wheels on my truck, my truck drove, it's a 37 package also. It handled so much better by stretching it out uh, just a little bit and it lowered the truck a little bit. So if you guys actually want to do that, these, the 37 package trucks, they feel kind of balloony. I don't know if that makes sense when you guys drive, but I feel it. It feels like it's like riding on its tiptoes almost. I kind of like a wide tire on the truck so it feels planted. So now my truck and this truck are sitting the exact same because when we got this truck home and I pulled mine up next to it, it was sitting like no joke that much higher. And I was like, what the hell? I know my tires are worn down a little bit, but not that much. And I actually figured out it was the rim. So we're gonna get this thing warmed up, pull it in the garage and the Apollo's looking sick as hell in the camera, good Lord. But yeah, we're gonna get this worked on and it shouldn't be too hard. Very, very easy install with intakes. I'm gonna show you guys, walk you through how to do it. And uh, yeah, get this thing on the move. So we actually did dyno this truck and I forget exactly what it did. I'll throw up the dyno clip and that thing looks like an absolute beast pulling in. And uh, they say SMB's cold air intake is good for 15 horsepower and 15 pound feet of torque. I don't know how true that is, but that's what's on their website, what's advertised. I wish I could have did a before and after on the dyno, but maybe once we do some other mods, we'll throw it back on the dyno to see what it does. If you guys want to see how much power it made, I'll throw in the dyno clip right now for y'all. <laughs> Did you guys see the truck lift up? <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah. Alright, that was actually more than I expected. 572 and 527 torque. But yeah, see it starts tapering off 6,000 RPMs. Wow, that's actually funny. SAE smoothing five. So it was actually more than I thought. 572. Wow, that's good. All right, so got the hood popped on the Raptor. We're going to start disassembling. Not, it doesn't really look too hard. Got to take out all these push pins here. Got to take this out. One bolt there. There's a sensor you got to unplug. Doesn't look too much. Vacuum hose right there. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty simple. Not too hard. I'll show you guys step-by-step -step little process. Oh yeah, there is a little bolt right there too. I just noticed that. Got to be careful. Can't break that off. And there's also that thing right there, it's hooked in. So we're gonna have to see how that runs. But yeah, it looks pretty simple on how it's gotta come off. I'll show you guys play by play as we're doing it. But yeah, for the majority, most part, it's it's very simple for this. So we're here unboxing everything, that's the box. I wanted to show you guys how big the filter is because I was looking at the specs online and this is the biggest cold air intake filter I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, let me reference my hand. Like, this is insane. Or actually, let me re reference the GT500 because the GT500 has the biggest cold air intake I've seen on a regular Mustang, period. The Mustang, this one has the biggest one. So now you're going to see the difference between the Shelby one and then the Raptor R. Granted, it's the same engine. Just the pulleys are a little different. Oh my God, dude. I thought the Shelby one was huge. This one is fucking massive. Dude. <laughs> Oh my God, look at this as comparison. This is, this is, this is retarded. This is straight retarded. Dude, look at that. It's almost as big as the goddamn supercharger. I mean, I don't know how other way to put it in perspective. This thing is freaking massive. I think I could fit my head in there. I could use this as a mask. I'll put my head in there and breathe through it. <laughs> Damn. Dude, that felt there so big. Do you have room in there? Yeah. Dude, and you got a big ass head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like nothing. That actually goes to show how big that filter is. I'm like blown away because I've never seen a filter this big. Dude, I don't think they're that big on the diesels. I don't know. 
The Super Duty one definitely didn't have one this big. It was like a regular rectangle filter. Well, this is definitely worth 15 horsepower, I'll tell you that. 15 horsepower and 15 pound-feet of torque. I'm not gonna lie, when I said like 15 horsepower and 15 torque, it says 10 to 15 on the website to be like 100% accurate. Um, I was like, I don't really think it's gonna pick up that much from an intake. Well, the stock one could fit in there, no problem. Actual size comparison. This is you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about right there. That's that's a big difference. That is guaranteed 10 horsepower, 10 torque all day long. So we're disassembling some stuff. We got the top of the box off, took the bolts off here, and we're just doing it little by little, making sure we're doing everything right. And the sensor looks like it doesn't want to come out properly. So trying to make sure just disconnected it off in three pieces might make it a little easier for you because now you can actually see where that little tab is. And then there's one bolt here. Had to take that off from Ford from the factory. They absolutely mangled the engine bay here. So shout out them for that. All right, guys. So when you're doing this, you're obviously going to disassemble the box, take everything out, remove this wire that is connected. And the trickiest part that we've ran into so far is SMB is going to give you these two little tools right here. You have to make a circle with them. And when I say a circle, it's got to go like this. So it's got to go like that, make a perfect circle. And this thin side is actually going to feed right into this, right in here. So you're going to see, they didn't really explain it good when I was watching their video, but see this little tab right in there. It's a different uh, quick release Ford pin. It's not like a legit quick one, but you have to put it in there just like that. And it'll push that. And then you obviously have to apply a little pressure up when you're doing it. Not crazy much, but it'll pop right out. It looks a little tricky at first. But uh, just be careful. I already dropped these once in the engine bay. So yeah, good luck with that. And then obviously what is next? We have to disconnect it from the throttle body. And there's two things we have to take off, whatever that thingamajig is and that. And I think that should be it. Just that is left for us to do. Then obviously reconnect, do all the same steps and reinstall it with all the new stuff. All right, so you're going to use your inlet air temp sensor. You're going to need that rubber grommet piece, but there's two in the box. So make sure you use the one with the arrow. And obviously you want that tab to line up just like that. And you want to screw these in screw them in my hand i recommend as much as you can for that one and for this one and then just snug it just a little bit and uh yeah you'll be good to go next step is obviously reassembling everything put it back in the box the filter itself clamps whatever rubber else piece it needs and we're gonna figure out step by step and i think it has to go fully assembled what it's looking like fully assembled and now into the truck so we're gonna figure that out make sure everything's buttoned up 100 percent got this one i just got to put the clips in up here Thank God we didn't have to use the factory OEM one because I did snap that. My hand absolutely took a blow and I uh, ripped it right off. So yeah, we got this massive filter. That's all check. And uh, yeah, a couple of little more pieces left. And I think we should be finished. All right, boys, so what you're going to want to do is after I showed you to install all these little thingamajigs, once you put all that on, assemble your whole air, air intake box. But when you do this, in case you guys are new at doing this, just make sure you do, you flip the clamp around so you can at least tighten it down. You don't want to tighten it down all the way. Keep it a little bit loose so you can like move it around a bit when you're trying to position it in there and connect it to the throttle body. There is a rubber piece that it is going to install to the throttle body. You're going to need the two clamps that come with the kit. Obviously, one's going to be here um, once it's tightened down and one obviously mounted to the throttle body. And uh, yeah, take a good look at ours. Make sure you guys did everything right, just like we did. And uh, yeah, we're just prepping it to go in, making sure everything's straight. And the last piece is just the throttle body now. And that's pretty much it. Everything looks like it's ready to go. What most 99% of YouTube videos will show you, they'll tell you this looks like an easy job. It's actually, it's actually not. It's pretty much a bitch to install. So I'm gonna give you guys my tips and tricks on how to install this. Um, honestly, on most intakes, you're gonna not wanna put everything together, like as is. Um, so like usually in theoretically, you would want to use this tube first and then you can obviously move it in and adjust it to get this, uh, throttle body clamped on and make sure that's on hundred percent. But this tube is so big and the fitment is so tight. You physically cannot, um, and plus being on a truck and standing on a little stump ladder does make it a hair bit more difficult. So I recommend you're going to want to do everything. Um, put it all together as is the filter you're going to see it clip in and then tighten it down just a smidge obviously you're going to still want to rotate it just a little bit but you're going to need it loose and uh yeah i've seen some other videos online i think this one's going to be the best one of me explaining how to do it and then when you do this piece you're going to just use one zip tie i zip tied it right there to the metal wire or the rubber wire that goes right there ran it across there under the bottom popped it out the side and boom clicked it in right there 
that's clicked in and over there that is also clicked in so pretty simple it's not too too bad i mean it's definitely difficult i had to pull it in and out about two or three times just to make sure it was 100 because like i said it's so big and when you keep trying to adjust the throttle body the way everyone else said to do it it keeps falling out so that was the issue i ran into so hopefully you guys don't run in with the same um, i'm gonna finish putting everything together rubber piece and just the glass cover and then we're gonna go for a little drive see if i can hear it inside the truck i think we will because i mean dude this is just so freaking big it's kind of crazy like look how big it is like look the fitment is insane like it is tight that is all she wrote and this is where the one bolt is the one bolt is right here and then they'll give you all new clips. You don't use any clips. You don't use any of this from the factory. This is a rubber piece that they give you. So it's nice. You do get a lot more air flowing down to the motor. Massive, massive filter. And uh, we're going to see if it actually makes a difference. So let us button it up. I'm going to show you how it looks. Everything's finished before and after. And then let's take it around the block. All right. So we're going to fire up the Raptor right now. Um, the only thing I'm actually a little disappointed about about this intake is this plastic. I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera. It looks like it's just distorted. There she goes, she's perfect. But yeah, all this plastic, I don't know if it's gonna show, it looks weird. Like I try to wipe it and clean it, but it just looks like the plastic's all deformed and now it looks like all smudged and stuff. Yeah, I don't know about that, but yeah, that's the only thing, I, if I had to complain about anything, I'd complain about that. I wish it came like more crystal clear. See all that? That's like in the plastic. Everything seems like it's good. We'll let it warm up for a few, give it a couple revs to make sure everything's on there nice and snug. Sucking harder than a prostitute on South Baltimore Avenue. Let her eat. Damn, big girl's moving. Yep, I'm not gonna lie, I felt that extra 10 horsepower. <laughs> it's like, I'm just joking. It, pulls harder. it does feel like it pulled good. Yeah, no. I mean, truck's strong. It always pulls good. So, look, it went up to 91, and look, now back to 84, 82, 80. 78. I feel like it revs out hard, better. Yeah, it just feels like it's. I feel like we would hear more blower whine. I feel like the. I, I feel like no, no, we hear it now, but I feel like it was whining harder when it was restricting of air. But yeah, now look at the air charge temperature. Watch it drop. 87. Yeah, she's going all the way down. 86. Yep, filter's working. Doing the job. So upon molestation of the Raptor, we noticed that the temperature drops a whole lot faster. Pop this thing, make sure everything's on there good. God damn, the hood's heavy. And uh, yeah, she's holding on strong. <laughs> Two miles later, everything looks tight, everything looks good. Let me know what you guys think. Raptor R is complete as of now. We drop in the pulley, maybe porting the blower. That blower's ported. We could actually do the full VMP setup on this. But I don't know. The Raptor tuning isn't available. So the only the intake is the only thing you could do as of now. Um, yeah, over on my GT500, Apex Predator lid. We actually could throw the lid on. We could do an Apex Predator lid. So like this, it's the factory supercharger, but it just has a, um, a bigger lid, which when you're when I'm on 85, um, all the way like with the small spoolie, 245, um, it gets 40 more horsepower to the rear wheels with this lid on E85. So it's pretty cool, just obviously moving more air. So you could do that on the Raptor. On pump gas, you might see like a 10 to a 15 horsepower gain. But I don't know if it's worth it. I mean, it'd be easier to install on the Raptor because you don't have a massive strut tower brace. But it does get a little tight back there, which would be the only issue. So drop a like on today's video. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any questions, follow me on Instagram. It's the same as the YouTube. And uh, would love to help you guys out with this install because it came out amazing on the truck. And I think it's worth it. If you want to check it out, I'll put the link in the description. This video is not sponsored. I always usually run the same parts that I usually put up here. That's pretty good. And that's the wall of parts. And yeah. 2024, baby. God bless. Love y'all. See you in the next one. Deuces.